evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sherrod Show. I'm, I'm Sherrod, your host. Hope you're doing well this evening. Today we have a very exciting uh, show, but a very informative show, and we're going to be speaking about two topics this evening. Tonight's first topic we're going to be speaking about is sexual harassment in the industry. Is it all false allegations or is it true? When women accuse men of uh, sexual Im inappropriate behavior, such as the R. Kelly's, the Harvey Weinstein's, the Bill Cosby's, and so on and so forth, is it m deeper than just the allegation? We're going to be talking about that tonight. And then also, we're going to be talking about being Black in America, part three, how we're going to be able to survive as Black people, and what are we doing to be able to better our situation? Some blame us for it, but are we at fault? Or is it all just the cops? So the Sherrod Show is brought to you by iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio, you can listen to the best episodes of the Sherrod Show right on your monitor. You can just download the app iHeartRadio and listen to the um, interviews with the Isley Brothers, Mike Tyson. You have the Whispers. You have Dorothy Moore, Seinfeld, all over and over and over on the Sherrod Show. And then also you can watch them on Essence TV right on your monitor. Just add Essence TV to your Roku, your Apple, um, your Apple TV, or Amazon Fire Stick as well. Now, these... These four gentlemen that's on the show, um, they've all been on the show before and they're very intelligent, very successful gentlemen. They have been doing big things in their respective fields and they stopped by the Sherrard Show to offer a little wisdom and insight um, in regards to their experiences as well as furthering the causes black people. First, we have our celebrity singer. He can get down, man. That man got a song called Cola, man. He got the ladies going crazy. And he's is currently charting on the, on the charts and he's doing some big things. And he's back on the Sherrard Show. Mr. Pace Brown, welcome back, sir. How are you? I appreciate having me again, uh, man. I, I, can't, I couldn't wait. Thank you. Appreciate you being on as well. And then we also have the man who, um, he really talks a lot about toddlers. But also, he's a huge philosopher, <laughs> and he's very wise beyond his years, a really good friend of mine. And he has some great products, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Oak Summers. Welcome back, my brother. How are you? How's it going, man? Always a pleasure, bro. Likewise, likewise. And then we also have the preacher. This man can preach the gospel as well as he's he has a non-for-profit called Totally Positive Productions that has been doing big things for years. And he also has his wisdom and his insight that comes straight from the Bible. And he's stopping by the Sherrod Show again. Mr. Tajajita Jones, how are you, sir? I'm good. Happy New Year's to you, sir. We really appreciate that. Same to you. And then we have a man that is very humble, but he's a gifted artist, producer, and he's also the nephew of the late Eric Garner. He had made an excellent impact on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he's back to give part two of his wisdom. Uh, Mr. Graham, and we call him Gabriel Bays. He's on the Sherrod Show. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Good. And for those who all are paying attention, this is a New York and Chicago show. We're not trying to do the Bears against the Giants. No, ladies and gentlemen, it just happened that way. All right. So I'm going to kick it off to you, um, Oak. Now, Oak, you see it in the news quite often about you see right on the news how someone all of a sudden is accused. A man is accused of sexually harassing a woman or saying that she was assaulted. Um, and the media immediately takes her side. But what is your thought when you see that pop up on the news? You know what? I, I don't pay any attention, man. Okay, my first thought is he must be ugly because I 50 shades go to these chicks all the time, man. Look, at the, at the end of the day, <clears throat> harassment is a feeling, right? So if I, if I snatch you by the back of your shirt, drag you in the alley, hit you with a bottle, that's assault. If I say, whatever I say, if you don't like it, it's harassment. But I don't know what you like. It's at the point now that, that women think the word female is profanity. You say, hey, ma, I ain't your mother, baby, I'm not your child, honey, this ain't that. So you, you, your, your recourse is you have to define what the exact harassment is. Cause I, I don't I don't go off just the verbal harassment. I just I think personally, I think that people are just hypersensitive and they're just looking for a reason to be mad. Now what do you think about that, Graham? What is your take on it um when you see that um on television? Immediately, what is your perspective? 
Um, I mean, it's it's so much that plays into it. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, the type of female it is, the type of dude it is, the situation. It's, it's, it's a lot more that plays into it. I mean, I don't know. You know, I mean, sometimes it's a come up for the female. Sometimes dude was being disrespectful and his revenge. You know, sometimes it's so it's a lot that plays into it, especially now with the way that things are going. Um, I can't call it, man. I try to stay out. Of, I, I try to stay out of situations like that. I don't want nothing to do with it because it, it always puts a dark cloud over you, your image, your movement, your brand, whatever you got going on. Whenever something like that comes comes about in the, in the tabloids, man, it just brings a dark cloud over you. So I try to stay away from it, man. But you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I can't call it, man. When you first, it's, it, like I said, it's a lot that plays into it. I can't just, I mean, it comes on the news and you, you, you don't know. It could be true, it could be not true. Mm-hmm. You just gotta, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know, man. It's, it's, we're living in some crazy days and times right now, man. That is correct. But now let's hear from you, Pace, because see, Pace, you're a singer and women throw themselves at you all the time. And you may not even be thinking about this particular woman, but she may have traveled city to city for every place you've been performing just to try and nail you down. And when you turn her down, all of a sudden it's assault. So please explain that to me. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a very fearful situation because it's working against what you are trying to, the things that you want, so as a as an artist, what you want you want fans. And when I when when I sing songs for the ladies, I want to be around women and express what I feel for them and how you know saying how I you know I want to experience them. Um, but of course, you have the the certain women out there or females uh, that they take advantage of what you want. They take advantage of those moments and they and said so they put the situation chasing after it in order to maybe catch that, that, that right moment where you're vulnerable. And it just makes you fearful when you see it on the news because it's like, man, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be caught up in, you know, like uh, just like Tupac was. I don't want to be caught up in a situation just like just like Chris Brown was where, and then somebody's there actually lying and, and or, or just like Justin Bieber. It doesn't matter like who you are and your status in the game, what it could always happen to you because what what. And the general public doesn't want to seem like victim blaming. So what they'll do, they have to give them a chance to speak. They're going to give them their 15 minutes of fame until, and you're actually guilty until you can only prove yourself innocent. So it's just really hard. And it's just um, as artists of wanting to attain fans and be a part of culture and a good spirit. Um, it just, sometimes it just is discouraging, but you know, you just gotta, it's like, now you gotta find, find out to how to be a recluse, like somebody like the weekend or something. You gotta find out how to, put yourself off in a distance where you just like, it, where you lock yourself off and then you look a certain way as an artist by doing that. So it's just hard. Very good. Now, now Josh, let me hear your thoughts on that. Uh, that's kind of, you know, listen to all the gentlemen, they have some very good points that they mentioned, but I think the key is, is um, first of all, we still have to respect them. Even if a woman doesn't deserve it, they, we, as men, we still got to, I think if you still respect them, because I think some of the times that you hear things of, you know, you, they may be called out of their names, you know, the B's, the H's and stuff, or get away from me because it's too too many of them. You still got to, I, I personally feel that's got to give them respect, whether they deserve it or not. And you, the devil is going to be present in, 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 in the spirit is strong, like you were saying, that it could get into somebody where they lie. When you first hear it, the first thing I try to look for is, okay, how long ago did this happen? Because most of the time when they bring it up, it's been years past. If it was something serious, they would have did not. I can see if it was like hours or maybe a day or two after the incident, they bringing it up. But some of these are years and they're going back in the past and it seemed like the general public love bringing up past issues. But that should be something that's, that should question, well, did that really happen or was it serious? Because this happened way back. Why it wasn't brought you know, to the forefront? So there's like a lot of investigative questions that would come to mind. Um, but the key is, is I know um, the space was saying is you try to separate, but the, the way this world is, you ain't, you could be not even close to something and then something could come okay. up. Okay, very you know, good. Just, just come up with it. But the truth is, remember, if God is for you, who could be against you and it tells you even in, in, in turmoils and situations, 
the truth would come out. So I, the key is, if you didn't do something, you stand on it. I, I, to me, when I always look at it and I say, well, why are you quick to get a lawyer? If you didn't do it, you didn't do it. You can stand up against anybody, whether it's the court system or something, and didn't do it. And the truth to come out some kind of way, but they, they everybody's quick to run to get lawyers to prove their innocence or do something. So that's where it makes it questionable, because I think it's the opposite. You didn't do nothing. You don't know that person. You stand up. You don't need to waste all that money getting lawyers and stuff like that. Fight the system by the truth and your word. Now, now Graham, what do you think about that when... Um as what the preacher was just saying, if you feel that you, if you didn't do it, do you need to get an attorney? What are your thoughts on that? There's a lot of innocent people sitting in jail for a long time, brother. Long time. Innocent. So I don't know about that one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I, no, I know, Mr. Graham, you say innocent, but they probably did have like a, a what? A, a, was it a public defender um, representing them and stuff like that? They, I'm saying if they still for themselves, and say, I don't need that. I'm gonna stand up for myself and, 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 and go with it. Now, what are your thoughts on that, Oak? Are you there? Oak stepped away for a minute. But what about you, Pace? Now, um, the preacher has a, a point, but the thing is that there's, there. you remember that commercial a long time ago, it was with the car dummies and they said, you know, wear your seat belts or you could be dead, right? You remember seeing that commercial a long time ago with the dummies? Well, well, it, dummies Yes. Well, the thing is, you can learn a lot yeah, from I mean, a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, exactly. that's just, I mean, but you got to what you got to think about in is, is this day and age. If you just trying to every time, every day that you sit back and don't say anything, that's when your businesses are no longer flourishing. That's when people are they judging you for that. They're going to judge you either way. I'd rather you judge me with a lawyer. If I really didn't do it, these, this day and age, fabricating information and fabricating documents and, and pictures and photos to make you actually look like you did something. And then you're being judged in the general public first before you get to court. And, and that's where a lot of our livelihood is made at. So the, the day that you're like, you know what, I'm just, I don't need a lawyer I, because I didn't do it. Let me put my trust and my faith in the Lord. Sometimes it's the Lord that needs to be pushing you or will be pushing you to get that lawyer or, or getting the right lawyer. You're going to be judged in the general public first. And so now your videos are not being played. Now you got people speaking out about you. I mean, look at what just happened to Tory Lane. We still don't know and didn't get a story. And he got judged fatally by everybody that didn't know about the situation and was lies on so many different sides. And then you look at it. Now people are not watching my videos. I'm not streaming my songs. I'm losing money. I got a family. So you talk about like, I mean, I'm going to lay back. That is just not being smart as a business man. And, and as a human, like, like I said, you're being judged first. And and um, it's just not gonna work. Not in this day. Uh, no, Mr. Mr. Pace, I, I heard what you said. I, I'm I'm not saying not sit back and not say nothing. You can still speak to the to the media yourself and say I'm not gonna get a lawyer. I'm gonna fight this by myself. I'm saying because the qu quick thing is, you know, is they're quick to get. I'm always looking at the business sense, and I know you're a businessman. Whenever something comes and want to get a lawyer, lawyer gonna take gonna eat your money. It's still all about money. Like you had said, if you caught up in uh, fame and I want them to play my records and all that, then I, I see your point. But to me. If I don't have to get up off no money, I'm not getting off no money. Whether they end up playing my songs, because I know I'm innocent. Right, so I'm not going to keep spending money, because them lawyers going to eat you up before you even get to court. So I'm going to save as much money as I can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and respond to that, Pace, and then we'll get you off. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's cool and all, but at the same time, look at a situation like Mike Tyson. He had to sit in prison while his body deteriorated, his money, his, his whole mind deteriorated, while before he was able to get his innocence proven. And then you still got that stain on you. Look at somebody like Tupac. Now I got to be in prison for all this time. And then just recently the lady goes, oh, well, it was just a lie. And or, like, it, lies will kill you and in and, and the public. And then you'll be crucified and you won't be able to do anything. You have to get a lawyer because then these people are ultimately looking for compensation. Mm -hmm. So with that compensation, that's when the lawyers are already in, in, involved. So as soon as they say something, they're not saying something just so you can so people can just hate you. They're not saying something so people can just not like you. Like you, These women were accusing R. Kelly and all of that. Some of them were, some of them were lying, some weren't. But you know what they did as far as compensation? Some of them got 15 minutes of fame. Some of them got a fat check. Some of them got more friends. Some of them have more accolades and they look better in the public. So you can't, you have to get a lawyer first. You just have to. Now, now Oak, let, Oak, let me get your thoughts on this, Oak. 
a strange position, man. Like, I don't <laughs> no, no, because here, here's the thing. I have structured my personal life. I understand exactly what he's saying. I've structured my personal life so I can tell him to fix my grits, right? Um, if I were an R&B singer like Pace, I would need women to be my fan base, right? But the way that I structure my life, everything I do is for men because I don't give a damn about what these girls talking about, period. Um, all of our organic products are, are male products. We started a sports league, professional pity pitching, all men. Women don't pitch pennies. You know what I'm saying? All my commercials are dirty folks. I, I practice toxic masculinity. I put myself in a position that if somebody, if a girl said he did it, everybody would be like, you know who you were dealing with. So it wouldn't even go that far. It's, it's like you never hear Hugh Hefner or Luke Campbell with a rape case. Hey, hey, they, they, just, hit, they just hit Ron Jeremy. Oh. You know what? That's crazy because Ron Jeremy. Like, Ron Je that's crazy, crazy, right? 140 years old, man. They're pouring his whole they life. Ron Jeremy? That's crazy. That's crazy. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> and, then, now, and that's interesting you, you say that, Oak, and I'm going to interrupt you for one second. Let me set up a scenario for you because I'm sure now Graham is a producer as well. Now, you were a preacher, Taj, and Dad Pace is an RB singer. Um, and then you have Oak, you know, who's a prominent businessman. Now, the thing is that. Many times men really, when you're in your positions that you gentlemen are in, you normally don't have to chase after the women. They usually find you. They'll target you. You know, you do a concert, Graham, they're there. Pace, likewise. Todd, when you're preaching, you have women chasing all over you, as well as Oak, you do one of your events, etc. Now, there's always one that has their eyes set on you that I'm going to bring him home. Do you not know there's a website um, the ladies just to know what cities the NBA players are going to be in. Every city they're going to be in, they can crack it down just so they can get the ball that they want. And how many stories have you heard where ballers have gotten to their hotel room and a woman was in their closet? He wasn't even thinking about it, but she was in his closet. The point is that they're thinking about us more than we're thinking about them. So when you, Taj, for example, when you um, a woman comes along and she's your type, you mess around with her, you know, you all, it was all mutual, but she feels she didn't get anything out of it. So now all of a sudden she want to go to the tabloids. How do you respond to that, Taj? Start with you. Like I say, if it's the truth, I, I keep saying that I know the gentleman probably going to get on me, but it says the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. And see, I know you built me up to something like that because you by being preaching, you know, I have God, they see God in me, right? So they were not going to be quick. <laughs> I, I, if I attract somebody that's bad, they're not going to come around me because I, I got the spirit of God. In. And you know, the devil don't, don't like to mess with good people. You know what I'm saying? And even if they did, it's, it get twisted up. You know, the scripture said, it said, when the enemies came to eat up my flesh, they what? Stumbled and fell. So most of the time they're going to stumble. As so long as I'm living right and doing right, that's why I keep saying it. I'm not going to spend no extra money. Mm -hmm. I'm not spending that. Oh, yeah. If I didn't do it, now, if I did do it, I had to bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say something for you, since, since you're a man of the church. You know, a lot of a lot of um, pastors and preachers and stuff, they always get the pedophile joint. They always got little boys and stuff. Saying now, for example, for you, if that happened for you, would you get a lawyer? If, if some mother came mercy, to say, mercy, that's a good question. Some mother, if a mother said. My son said he was touching on me. Mm -hmm. Would you get a lawyer or would you be quiet? Good question. Well, thank God I've never been in that situation. <laughs> um, but the thing, yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah, because oh. see, now, now you have to understand, preacher, that's one that'll land you in jail until they can sort it out. They're not going to wait around and say, uh, we're going to hear what you got to say. Typically, you're going in and they're going to sort it out later. And you in trouble when you go in. <laughs> Boy, I know that, that, that's what I'm saying. But I know God will find my back because I'm falsely accused. I know God is going to, well, I, I'm not going to prophesy that into, but I know God has my back. So whoever would do that and whatever system, they're going to pay the price. And you can see now that some of people that's been innocent, like you say, in jail, slowly but surely justice is coming to them. Some of them are getting out then they find it, you know, with DNA and all this and that. But mm -hmm. you're right, to a certain extent, there may be a little suffering, but remember, if the truth shall set you free, if, if the Bible tells you, you 
go to court. It says to speak for yourself. It says it. All I'm saying is I have to go with what the what does said the word. If I didn't do it, I'm not spending no extra money, whether it hurts my reputation or whatever, because you know what? Sometimes I found out it's just a test because you got to go outside the norm because the first thing they're going to say, oh, he's going to get a lawyer. No, I'm, I would say, where's a piece of paper and pen? Can I write to the judge myself? Who can I talk to? Me as the individual. I don't need nobody. And I would tell Yo. the audience and I would tell the media, I'm going to stand for myself because I didn't do it. Okay, let me get your let me get your comment. Oh, your word your against comment. the mother and her son. Yeah. Hold on, you ain't wait, got wait, no wins against the mother and her son. Let, let hold, on say. 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 hold on one second, Grant. We'll get your response. If Let's it's get the truth, over. yes, you can. It will go through it. The truth will cut it. Go hold ahead. Go, all right. go ahead. All right. First of all, it's a funny scenario because that's normally a piece of a priest thing, not a pastor thing. You no, know, Baptist church especially is a is a is a hospital for holes. So it, it'll be it'll be some single mother, but the and it's apparently he ain't never been to court because they don't care about a letter. But the the um here's the thing, man. Because I believe that the truth can set you free, but I also believe that women believe their own lies until they believe it's the truth. So they can tell a lie with conviction. The the thing is, because I used to get man, I used to get accused of rape every two years, right? Every time somebody boyfriend go through their phone, all of a sudden I I snatched the coochie. And she don't know how to coach. <laughs> well, I mean, for real. Um, I, I've had recently, at like, man, recently, I had a girl invite me over our house and we did the do, but I don't kiss. I'm one of them dudes that think kissing is more intimate than sex. You know what I'm saying? So she called me the next day, felt like I felt like I got raped. You ain't even kiss me. Huh? You called me over there. I don't, I don't entertain that. I will say this. I don't understand it because because you know the content of your character and people like I said people know they don't know what you're capable of but some certain things just don't sound like it has to happen right like I wouldn't believe I believe R. Kelly is a statutory rapist but I don't believe R. Kelly is a hitch over the head rapist because it's not something he would have to do but I will believe that about uh what was his name in Hollywood um Weinstein uh, Weinstein. I, I look at Harvey Weinstein. I said, oh, yeah, he definitely snatched. You know what I'm saying? It's it's certain it's certain things that, that you would have to believe. I wouldn't have to believe Justin Bieber had to snatch up a, you know what I'm saying, a group. Justin Bieber? Like, it's certain things just don't make sense. Kobe Bryant, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson could have got out if he would have just said he did it. He he was standing on the courage of conviction, and he did four years. But when it comes down to because now, now y'all talking about sexual assault. When it just comes down to sexual harassment, this is what I know. I know that, honestly, if y'all really thought about it, liberal women hate you. Everything they say is to hate you. You know what I'm saying? Every time you do something they don't like, you gay, you hate your mother. You know what I'm saying? Who raised you? There, There's a, a, a cantankerous spirit in America that, is anti-male, anti-heterosexual male. Only 2% of the nation is male, but there's two black men kissing in every show. There's a real war against just masculinity. And that's fine, but there's an ebb and flow. I'll give you an example. I can't beat up girls anymore. I didn't beat up girls anyway, but I can't because of OJ. Remember before OJ, you can get in a fight with your girlfriend, call the police, police say you to leave for a couple of hours. After OJ, guys went directly to jail. She, he'd be at work. She'd call, like, he threatened me on the phone, said he was going to beat me. They'll come to your job and take you. That was 20 years ago. Now, if she called the police, both of y'all go to jail or neither one of y'all go to jail. So there, there's always a correction in this. The correction that's going to happen with all of this uh, sexual harassment stuff is going to be the exact opposite of, of, of what Taj said. It's going to be a total lack of credibility. Um, it's already that. Like if you, my like my cousin went to jail. My cousin stay in jail. We all got a cousin stay in jail, and they talk, they talking about he's talking about now that they on domestic disputes and 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 sexual harassments. They giving you OR bonds on Chicago I bonds, but it was on recognizance. Like they the police are to the point they're not even believing women, and they send you right back home. So all these things have a cost they have a cost and it's always a cost to 
the perceived victim. You know what I'm saying? So I don't concern myself with that. You stay out the way, keep your head low, keep firing, and get through the get through it. Cause everything will balance itself out, man. If I if I know anything about women, and I know a little something, every woman needs protection, but she mostly needs protection from myself. So you got to put yourself in a position that she can't hurt herself the same way you same way you baby proof your your house for an infant. You got to baby proof your life for a toddler. You know what I'm saying? And 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 keep yourself in a position that you stay on cold, just on cold. As long as you stay on cold, nothing else anybody else say about you, it ain't even gonna matter. What do you think about that pace? I, I mean, I just kind of went left because I really understand the logic of the uh, women need protection from themselves. That's the first time they had anything remotely close to that. That's just crazy. I'm sorry, but I don't know what women grew up around, but there are some very, very capable women on this planet. And, and they don't need protection from themselves. And as a matter of fact, when it comes to the, the soul spirit of harassment, there are women that do harassment on on some very large scale. The it's that are the it's the, you know, and these women will actually distinguish themselves and call them these almost to the point where they need to have that separation. See, the, there's women that are that are after you and will you know try to use harassment and lie, and there are women that would never do that that receive harassment that do not deserve it. They don't they don't need anybody on any man. To, to, to protect them from themselves from from what to, to, to even say to, to even say that you know um, you can't beat your, your you were never supposed to beat your girl before AJ or post AJ um, I'm an OJ or, or before it just that it, that you would never shouldn't be doing that if you're somebody who you feel that's what you need to do then you don't need to be around them and then maybe the opportunity that you are receiving in that meantime Maybe you really just don't deserve them because I don't know where the mindset or the mind frame that a woman needs to protect herself from, uh, need, need to be pregnant, protected from themselves. They're very, it's some very educated women out here. There's some very capable women out here, some very smart women. And I got daughters. So I really don't even think about like that. I don't think like that at all. So like, I mean, if there's anybody that really has that mindset, it's just crazy to me because there are women that get harassment and they don't need to, they, that they don't deserve that. There's nothing they did to, to even warrant it. And then there are women that not are not knowing or not uh, paying attention or they're doing it on purpose to get a certain special attention from guys and then when they get harassment, then they want to backtrack. There are those, but let's not group them all in the same um uh, ball. Like that's just crazy. I don't know, like they I, I don't I just like I said, I don't know what you've experienced, but I've experienced different, much different. Well, let me say something, though, Pace, in terms of what Oak is meaning by the part of, first of all, about the uh, OJ part. What he's saying is that he doesn't beat women, but what he was saying, like, say, for example, there was a dispute at the house, and it was a he say, she say. What he's saying, it automatically, now, the man you know. goes to jail, regardless of who's right or wrong. But, but before that, prior to that, before OJ, if it was a dispute, the man would just, the uh, police officer would come by and just say, you just walk it off. Just walk it off for a couple of hours and then uh, come on back. Nobody got arrested. So now that we're so, things are so sensitive with that, that's what he was saying. Is that, is that correct, Oak? That's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying about that. Okay. But then, and, and, and then that, the other exactly thing- what turned into the problem. I said again, Pace? I said, I think that's what turned into the problem in the first place. People were just letting things go and women were, were, were dying. You were, you were getting the situations of serial killers, like you were getting stories coming up from the past because people were just letting them go and people were letting them slide. Yeah, um, they use old for a lot of that and use them to attack men, uh, as black men in a certain way and to a certain degree, but it was happening way before that. These things were getting swept under the rug and it was just very, some very, very bad incidents. Like, I don't believe, oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't believe OJ did it, but, you know, like I said, there's, there's a whole lot of men that were doing it, you know what I'm saying? And it was just getting, oh, no, let's take a, like you like you said, it was right, they take a breather, go chill. And then he went and, and, and bashed ahead in again. That's Very I, good point. It, it, Very it, good point you're making, Pace. That, that, that was a part of the problem. 
Right. Now, that's a very good point. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking to two, uh, four very in prominent, very uh, intelligent black men about sexual harassment, sexual assault. Is it always uh, the case or is it false allegations? We're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen, when we come back. We're going to hear from them on what solutions or what ways can men protect themselves from what could be the inevitable. I'm Sherard. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Sherrard Show. I am your host, Sherrard. Hope you're having a wonderful uh, Monday evening on this 4th of January. Already 2021, we are back speaking to four uh, very prominent individuals about the industry, um, sexual assault, uh, also sexual aggravation, all the things that come along with it. And when we watch it on the news, it appears that it sticks, even though many times it is not correct. Now, this uh, segment, we're speaking about how men can, ways men can be able to protect themselves all these men are good looking men, women, um, I'm sure chase them all over the place. But men, oftentimes you talk about women need to be protected. How are we going to can protect the men um, from being victims of false accusations? I'll start with you, Graham. What are your thoughts on that? You know, man, we got cell phones and camera phones now, man. You can document it, baby. Just document it. You know what I'm saying? That's your best bet. Document it. Record the conversation. Save the texts and the emails. Like, she said she was coming over to do this. I got the text. I got the email. You know what I'm saying? I got a little video cam over there, a little cell phone footage. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, it, it's, that's an it seems way. like it seems disrespectful. And you got, I mean, but you got to protect yourself. You have to protect yourself because, you know, there's guys out there that are used females and there's females out there that are used guys and it's vice versa. You know, sometimes the guys get calm. Sometimes the women is getting calm. It goes both ways. Like, I don't believe, I actually believe women that get away with it more than a guy would. You know what I'm saying? Especially in the courtroom. So, I mean, for me, I'm, I, I was heavy on the polar voice and, and, the, and, the, and the throwaway cameras back, back then. But I'm married now, so I ain't got to worry about it. But <laughs> my days, man, it was going down. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I, and I'm, Paul I'm, <laughs> I had the polar voice. I had the polar voice, you know what I'm saying? Old school, I'm, 40, I'm 42 now, so I, I date, I date that, so I go back to the polar voice and the throwaway cameras. But now, you know, you got the camera phones, man. It's going down. You got the texts, you got the Instagram DMs. You know what I'm saying? You got to save all that now. You got to save oh. that just in case you <laughs> pop up on you, like yo. What about you, Taj? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, okay, I know now. I guess I'm gonna throw this one at Graham. I and I'll speak to Mr. Pace and Mr. Oak. I'm telling you, you gotta use God. I remember I was in the situation like that, was in the restaurant, and this lady, she had a wristband, I guess must have came out the hospital or something. She was trying to, you know, say at the table and everything. But until I started mentioning God, it's like the spirit of something hit her and she got up and walked away. So if ever I'm in that situation, I say, you know what, God is good. God bless you. Start putting God in it. It's gonna knock them spirits out the way. You ain't gotta have yourself. Because first of all, I ain't got time to be put, holding up a phone if I'm somewhere and trying to, you know, catch your stuff. You know, and, and the key is, is for men to hopefully, you know, be sober minded. Because if you look back at some of the cases, you gotta look at what was the surroundings. Were they high? Were they on drugs? Because if you under the influence, you may not know what you have done. So it could have happened, could not, or whatever. But if you use God, that's why I keep saying, if God be for you, who can be against you? But the key is, is bring it up in those moments. You'll see it said, resist the devil and he will flee. So in those moments where girls are coming around or something like that, just start talking spiritual. You know, God is good. God bless you. You're wonderful. Because remember, the devil and the women, they don't like good people. If you evil, you don't like to be around something good. Now, if I come down to their level, yeah, you be, you a, and keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm adding fuel to the fire. It's gonna be a constant. But if you flip it and say, "God bless you, you're wonderful," and you start talking good, they ain't got time to be around you. They gonna leave. They ain't now, got about, time to be with you. What, what are your thoughts on that, Oak? I think he, I, I like both of their points. I, I like document, document your thing, and I. And I like being, you know, having a sober mind or at least having 
having your wits about you. I I believe that um a lot of protecting yourself, and this is from anybody, this is from anybody, is knowing your audience. You know, every every place that you go, um, you know, you got to stay within your within your personality base and 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 know your audience. Another thing I, I and this is why I preach to my cousins is they they just they just women. Like, don't put it on a pedestal, don't put too much angst or or power on that you know what i'm saying because then you go outside your element it's like people like i'm not a fan of anybody the only person i was ever a fan of i got to meet my hero and he was like yo man my life crazy too man keep your head up and i actually had to have a you know a relationship with, with the only person who i was starstruck by so i i don't i don't get starstruck but you see it every day like pace does the music if a woman likes his music then she may have a preconceived notion be like yo this is I feel that vibe, you know what I'm saying? They put they put people on the pedestal. Guys do it all the time with women. And then they say they say and do things that, that's kind of awkward. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. And nobody wants to be weirded out. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of ways just be cons- you know, be consistent with knowing your audience, talking to your audience in, in the same, you know, without being creepy and, and be sober minded so you don't get too high, too low. So you're not like, oh my God, I drink your bath water, which is creepy. Right. Or mm-hmm. yo bitch, I beat your ass, which is also also creepy. You know what I'm saying? And you just like I don't want to holler fine. All right, man, have a good day and keep it moving. Mm-hmm. So, yep. you know, all those things. What about you, Pace? I mean, I think um, I mean, yeah, you want to keep God and you want to keep that spirit, but there are some real predators out here. There's some people that will use that as a ploy and a catalyst and as, as a host. To, to reel you in and to just those five minutes of, of a conversation, they will flip that. So the, the best way is to actually keep documents, keep those receipts. Another way, I mean, I like, I, I just like with myself and a lot of my partners, I, I mean, uh, we have conversations <clears throat> like this. Um, we just make sure we keep a routine. That's the best way. When you have a certain routine and certain things you do, it's, hurt, it's, it's very hard for somebody to induct themselves in that routine if, if you don't let them. And then when you keep your receipts in those routines, they're going to like, nothing's going to happen that you don't want to happen. Because I mean, for real, if you have integrity and you're really, you know, like sometimes it's, it's just takes you just kind of being smart about the way you're carrying yourself and the, and the way you're moving for you to not put yourself in a situation, even though those situations are going to knock you off your course, out of off your access, out of nowhere, somebody's going to have some crazy accusation. Just like with Justin Bieber's last one, he wasn't even in the same country as the person was accusing him at the time. And it took him like three, four days for him to be like, wait a minute, I need somebody to go home from this time because we can't go to the past in 2000. Like, and they got to go back and get the phone. So you got to keep receipts. Keeping the receipts is just the routine. I don't know. That's just how I feel. Okay, so Mr. Pace, I have a question. Now, that one example that you said with Justin Bieber, that he wasn't even in the place where the person that accused him, would you need to get a lawyer? See, that's now that's that's clear cut. Now, if you weren't even in the country where somebody said that you was, why get a lawyer to represent that when that is clearly, you, you see what I'm saying? You don't need to pay somebody with the truth. Um, all right, so... So in that situation, what you what, what's going to happen is, so you're going to need, a, this is why you're going to need a lawyer, because that first day that you get accused, they already went to court. So they're, they, all you have to do, you don't even, if you, if you choose not to say anything, you need a lawyer to actually speak to you. You're not going into court. I mean, if you want to represent yourself, that's not the smartest thing. Because if you're somebody like Obiba, you the things you need to be putting out right now, at the time he's bringing out that. I need a lawyer to speak for me. I need them to get the receipts for me. Because only they, as a lawyer, they have the bar because so they, they're allowed to actually bring in certain documents and to actually put these things as evidence and, until you get to court. You can say you cannot say anything in that whole time, but you need somebody to speak for you because no, he already I, has representation. Right. I'm not saying making... not speak, but Mr. Pace, I'm not saying not to say anything. Uh, I'm saying is even if Justin Bieber, as he is, speaks to the media. He can still go and represent. I'm saying in that particular case when he wasn't even in the state or country where the person said it was. That's clear cut. Why? 
Yeah, like, like you say, if you big on your reputation, then yeah, I mean, maybe that's on that. that. But if that's what, clear, what, 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 that's what, what, less what, money that has to come up. What, 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 he's saying is, what, he, what he's saying is this, um, you know, so in, in this world of social media, if somebody turns around and gives you an act, you say you did this and did that, and they just do it on social media to stain your reputation, then you don't, if you weren't in the, in the vicinity in the country and all that stuff, I agree with your point. Don't get, a, you don't need an attorney. Right but what Pace is speaking about is that she went to the courts and by the time she got back from the court, that's when it hit the airwaves. So when it hits the airwaves like that, you need a, a, an attorney to respond to her allegations. Is that what you're saying, Pace? Uh, right, I understand what you're saying, but Mr. Sherrod, I don't care yes, if it's the Supreme Court, the nine juries that's on the Supreme Court and she went to that. It's sometimes this life is common sense. And you, you can know say that that allegation that you can be arrested there? right was away? Was it there? No, 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 all right, I'll make it easier than this. You can be you arrested can you. right away. No, I'll make it easier than that. Even okay. if you're not arrested, if she accuses and you and you can prove you out the country, you it's still need a lawyer in order to file for a case dismissal. I mean, something as simple as that. So, I mean, you still, you know, still gonna cost you at least 200 bucks for that. So, I mean, you're gonna come out of something. It's, it's, all right, well, ladies and gentlemen, well worth it. We got we got the questions burning up. All right, we got the questions burning up. All right, this question is from Adam. Adam from Colorado. This is for you, Graham. Adam says, first of all, congratulations um, on all your success, and uh, we he's honored to have, see the nephew of the late Eric Garner. His question to you is: uh, being in the industry um, and still being married, has it been tough on you in terms of being faithful as a married man, Graham? It's faithful regardless. I mean, it's um, it's 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 hard to be faithful regardless. Matter whether I'm in the industry or if I'm not in the industry, it's it's. It's always gonna be a struggle to stay faithful to my wife. I ain't even gonna lie about that. Hey, hey, that's never easy. You know, we saying? got an honest that's, man on the show, ladies. That's not going away. That's not we have going an away. honest man on the show. I appreciate that. But you know what? But you know what? I've yeah. done enough in my time, and everything is so weird right now that mm -hmm. I'm happy being home with my wife, and I know who she is. It's so weird right now. It's is is transgenders going on? Is he's? Is she's? Is them's? Is it's? Is you know what I'm saying? It's weird out there right yeah, now. I mean, it's I mean, it's it's crazy out there right now. I'm just I'm happy to be married in 2020. I just got married. You know what I'm saying? But before that, it was good. But now it's a weird world out there, man. It's, it's too much going on, man. It's just too much, man. It's too much plastic surgery. It's just too much injections. There's too many <laughs> fake lips, fake faces, fake everything. It's, it's too much. You know what I'm saying? I like it's too it. much for me, man. I'm, I'm it. Happy, yo, I ain't even gonna lie, man. I'm, I'm happy to be I'm happily married right now. I don't want I don't want to touch nothing right now. Go ahead, Good. preacher. Amen. Amen. We really appreciate your question, Adam. All right. So this question is for this question is for you, um, Pace. This is DC, DC out of uh, Orlando. He says, uh, Pace, you're doing great with your music. We really appreciate that and your insight. I actually agree with that. But his direct question to you is, have you ever been a victim of sexual allegations? Pace? No. No. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't had that problem. No, I, I don't. I don't put. I mean, I haven't. I mean, um, no, I, 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 the way I carry myself, I'm very private anyway. Um, I don't, I don't really talk to a lot of people. I don't really trust a lot of people and I dedicate myself to other things than put, being around certain people. So I, like I, like I said, I keep to a certain routine and if nobody, if I don't want you inside of my routine, then, and most likely whoever I let in my routine, you're not going to do that. So yeah, no, I'm no. Mm -mm. Very good. Very good. This, this question is for you. Oh, this is Melinda. Melinda from Park Forest. She says, Oak, um, <laughs> first of all, you look like you're um, you're sleeping over there in the show. No, he's awake, he's awake. But Melinda wants to know, have you ever been married and are you angry with women? Oak? No. <laughs> 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 um, nah, I've been common law married. I was with somebody for like eight years. That's longer than a lot of marriages. Um, and no, I'm not angry with women. What I am is I'm 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 actually angry with men because people can only do what you tolerate. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that happen to men because men allow 
victimhood to pass. Um, for instance, when I'm on social media, uh, a lot of jokes are about abusing men, right? Ha ha he he, right? If you catch a man, if you catch a man not cuddle with you, smack him on the back of the head. Just, just a lot of stuff. But if it were the other way around, there'd be no ha ha he he. There is no funny rape joke. You know what I mean? So my thing is, what do you tolerate? You know what I'm saying? And I just have a very low tolerance for, for foolish stuff. You know what I'm saying? For, for the things that people do that I deem as disrespect that people say that you should let pass just because. Things that you wouldn't let pass if it was another man, things that you wouldn't let pass if it was your child. You're like, yo, just let it pass. And I, I just don't do that. Very good. Very, all right. This question is for you, Preacher. This is from April from Dallas, Texas. She's saying she loves that you're devoted to the Lord and that you honor him in all things. But her question is, are you saying that because you wear the Lord as your shield, bad things won't come to us? Is that what she's, she's asking? Oh, no, no. I mean, bad's going to come to everybody. But at least when you have God, then you you should have that spirit of discernment. Be able to it, well, the scriptures say you in the world, but not of the world. We all going to experience things, but if you're a Christian, that you should act differently and act more accordingly than someone that's not of the world um, on that. And I'm just saying that from my experience that I've learned that to be more nice and that, that to take God, He's my shield. I've seen the action that it, it just diffuses a lot of information because. The opposite of, especially us as Blacks that have to do, we're quick to anger, quick to talk about stuff, even though that may be the norm. But when you try to talk nice or don't get um, get like fuming mad and just be calm and nice, you could diffuse a whole lot of stuff. Because even when it was brought up with the case with, um, I remember that case with Mike Tyson, <laughs> that came with my mind was, if he would have talked to Robin Gibbons nice, because I, I can see with his demeanor or something like that, he probably was saying, you be and doing all this, because he had everything. And when you have everything, I think you'll talk to people a different way. And I said, man, if he would have just been nice to her, because you know how it is, is you know, you can kill people with kindness. You have to be that extra kindness, because if you fall to temptation or fall into them and be mad, talk about them, you had fuel to the fire. But if he would have just been nice, that's just my opinion. He could have he 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 got away with, you know, whatever he was doing. That's okay, my... this last question. Now, this is for all of you all. Um, <laughs> and this is from Dana. This is from Dana from New in Albuquerque. Her question, that's from all you all, gentlemen. Her question is, why is it when Black men become successful, they tend to date and marry white men? Okay, I'm going to start that with you, Graham. What is the question? Her no, question is, why is it when Black men become successful they tend to okay I think, I think i think that happens i think i think it's, I think it's multiple reasons mm -hmm. i think white women are more docile i think they'll let more things slide i think they're more into threesomes and i think they'll let you cheat on them i think they'll allow a lot more and they will they don't attack you as much um, and I think they use the white woman to fit in with the white people that's successful around them. Since, you know, when you come successful, you're not going to be around too many of your kind. You're going to be around white people. So they probably get a white wife so they could fit in better. So they, when they go out to eat, she has stuff in common. Everybody feels more comfortable. Me, I'm not into anything. I'm not into interracial marriages or coupling or even having babies. I'm not into none of that. It happens. Okay. You know I don't. I don't got no rights about it. It's just not my thing. I don't. I'd rather not be a part of anything like that. You know what I mean? But those are the reasons why I think people do that. I think they do that so they can fit in. And white woman is just a, a different. They're a different animal than a black woman is. You know what I'm saying? What? Okay. Very good. What about you, uh, Oak? What is your take on that? I don't, I don't know about they let you cheat and all that stuff. I had plenty of research for black women. Um, yeah. no, 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 no. I don't mean, I don't mean let you cheat. I don't mean, I don't mean not that. If I think a white, I think white women, they, they know that they don't want to disrupt the household. If you got money, they're not gonna attack you. They'll let it slide. They, they do their dirt quietly. They'll do what they're gonna do quietly, but they're not gonna attack you. You see it. 
right, I'm gonna say this. They're gonna attack you behind closed doors. That's what's yeah, gonna they, happen. They're gonna attack you behind closed doors. Okay, they, go ahead and let Oak speak. Go ahead and Oak speak. They ain't gonna leave you. 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 They're gonna, they're gonna whisper all type of foul stuff like I'm gonna fuck your brother. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they know, but nah, this is this is a, this is the thing. They a different all, animal. <laughs> first of all, most black men date black women, so that's not even like every dude get bred and and get a white girl. But I will say this. Um, two things. Number one, black girls are rather aggressive. If you got to fight the world, you don't want to come home and fight your girl. But but more than that, more than that though. It's proximity, right? Like I got a niece. I'm gonna tell you a story. This is this is this is a big reason why. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I got a niece who's a doctor, but I don't ever call her a doctor because she's my niece. But she called me one day. She was in her last year doctorate, uh, her doctoral uh, program, and she says, "Uncle O, why can't I get a, a a black male doctor? Why do all the black guys in the doctoral program date white girls?" And I told my niece, I said, well, man, you missed your man in undergrad. I said, because what you want to do is you want to be, you want to become the man that you want to date and then find a man that's more man than you tried to become. And guys don't want to do that. Those same guys that date the girl at Hooters. But here's a, here's the thing though. There's a strange thing about white girls. Like personally, I would never marry a white girl. Right. But I wouldn't marry a white girl, not because I'm just so pro-black woman. I wouldn't marry a white girl because white people see black people as pets. But they treat their pets very well, so they'll treat you kind. But when they see you, you are exotic to them. The same way that my dream sex fetish would be like to have sex with an Arab chick and try to skid on that dot on her head, that's a fetish. Black people are a fetish to white people. So, and you will know that if you ever go to Iowa or Minnesota or South Dakota, and you will see how the white people treat black people. They treat you kind, but like a fetish. So men, black men take that nice idea that white people will have for any puppy or, or try to save the whale energy. And they say, yo, I want to be encapsulated in that because it's, because it's not hostile, because it's not aggressive, because it is a, a smooth selling thing and it works. For, for a first few years, and then they catch hell later because they didn't understand the signs. Black girls are very aggressive, but they give it to you in the beginning. Black girls are very docile, and they sneak it up to you. They're like, they like uh, boys. They just- Whoa, 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 whoa. Up. Black men, we aggressive too. We, we, oh, we aggressive. are aggressive. Just oh, let's we stay super. aggressive. Oh, we, we're yeah. aggressive too. We're yeah, aggressive yeah. too, but the whole thing is, when we people like that aggression. You know what I'm saying? People like male aggression, period. You know what I'm saying? White boys are aggressive. You think they passive, but they took over the world? Come on, man. They they don't mind aggressive men. Black men just don't, they not used to docile women. So they think it's something new and different. But it's really the same old thing. It's just a different package. Okay, what about you, Pace? What's your thoughts on it? All right. I mean, I've seen this go in so many different directions other than actually answering her question. And, and and I hate it for it because this is what I see on a regular basis is that when a man asks this question, it seems like the, for the majority of it, we're answering a what problem that that us black men have with black women. And and it's just like, you have, first of all, you haven't experienced every black woman, so you can't say they're all aggressive. Well, they're most likely aggressive to be like, I mean, and, and I think the confusion is when you get that question of, you know, why do we go towards of white women when we get famous, but I, what I think that we get confused is, is that what, what y'all are seeing is that y'all are seeing those black men that already wanted to be with those white girls. We were probably in situations or we were probably in neighborhoods we probably maybe not have seen many white women, but they probably always wanted to be with them just because of her looks or because of they, that's just what they want to, that's what they do. Not because she's, she's less, she's more conformative or she won't say anything. Those are, those are stereotypes. Because on those stereotypes, um, that's when we get the match of the, all right, so this is what our fetish is, is because we just put stereotypes on things. What I think is like, I, because I, I, my ex-wife is right, my, my child is mixed, so I don't have no issues with that. But what I'm, what I'm, my thing is, is I, I always wanted to be with this certain type of girl. So this is, this is what my, always my preference was. My grand is, is, you know, 
I have those ba- those those barriers and those degrees of separation. But what I think is is that people you're seeing guys that always wanted to be with that type of girl, and then there's there's, there's the jealousy of like, oh, I wanted that type of guy, and they stop their their visual of of seeing that there's other guys out there that are that are just as successful that you can be with. This and and like like the gentleman said earlier, there are. Plenty of guy, uh, black men that don't just automatically get with, with uh, white women as soon as they can see or get or get or whatever that is and that is because those are different degrees as well. But when you get to when you see like somebody like a a, a Kanye West maybe he gets with Kim, like, if you hear him in all of his interviews, he always be with so, like, people always wanted to be with that time that you didn't have that they, they weren't that, that opportunity there. Somebody like a fifty had different opportunities to be with different women, not because they're exotic, it's because it, it seems exotic, it's something that you are not used to, something that you always wanted to attain, but it just wasn't in your finish and actually capture or, or be a part of. I mean, I'm kind of confused in that. I think there, and there are some black men of the very confused of, of the fact that, you know, when maybe a white woman means success. Maybe I can get into this room because a black woman won't be looked as, as great. Well, that's your fault. So, like, I mean, if, if you think that the women that you are choosing are not strong enough to be with you and you think that a woman that is, is more uh, conformative to you and she can just put her under her wing, your wings and she makes you look like, like, like gold, you can't, you, you, I'm, I'm sorry, you, 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 not everything that glitters ain't gold, I'm sorry, but, like, like it's just a confusion on, on so many different levels and I, we need to really open our eyes and really see for things for what they actually are. It's like, people really just want to be with that. This person has this, he had this preference. Don't put, you, they are the people with confusion. Be like, we want them to like this, and we're not getting that, so we're upset. You know, you know what I, I so think I me, I think me and Oak, I think me and Oak were trying to say, we, we said the wrong word with aggressive. We just mean black women are more passionate. Like, you just not going, you just not going to tell them anything and do anything. You want that? And get away with it. You shouldn't do that with any woman. Say that again. I don't. I, I don't want any woman that is passive. I need my woman to be a fire. So whether she's black, white, Asian, I don't care. I need my. my I need my shorty to be hard, just as hard as me, and and fighting to keep to my death. I need those queens around me, and they come in different. Queens are and there's, there's empresses and and different cultures and of of so many different colors and likes. I think. Maybe some men uh, don't want to have to have that fight. You're choosing the women. Your your, your um, connection is a bit bad, um, Pace, because we're missing some of your real key points. Um, can you hear us? Yeah, no. Nah, but when I was when I was saying, I was just trying to. I wasn't talking about relationships at, at home. I'm just saying why certain gentlemen get to a certain platform in life, and then become infatuated and marry a white woman is because another reason is, is like I said, is I think it's more likely to fit in. Like when you're around these type of people, you when you get successful, you're around a lot of white people. You want a white wife, your white friends, it's, it's just all fits in together. You know it's, what? It's, it's the image. Now, you know. Now, hold on, now hold on one second. Oh, we want to get Taj in here. I got to get Taj opinion on this. Um, he, he didn't get a chance to speak. Let's hear yours, Taj. And we're running out of time, gentlemen, so we're going to wrap it up. Go ahead, Taj. Well, it goes back to what you had said. I think when it's sometimes they seek you out, the individual, um, and they find the weakness. I mean, with us Black men, there's a struggle. Then we get in the presence. I'm not saying we should, because it could be somewhere, because it seemed like somehow or another, they kind of track us or know who's up, moving up, who's being successful. Then, you know, like if you're poor, you're going to probably see a lot of ugly women around you. You start getting up, you start seeing pretty women. And they get the other cultures or something coming around, and they being nice. You might like that. But the thing is, is... I still say you got to stick with God and believe in yourself. Because in this life now, and I think Mr. Graham had mentioned it, it's crazy out here. It, just to be happy as an individual, as a man, I, I just want to be happy. So if I'm happy, the woman I'll be around or I allow my presence to be, they have to be happy. But so many people are struggling. So it, it, it's one of those decisions as a man, what do you want to do? If you want to be happy and content, you're going to surround yourself as much as possible. 
Now, if you hang around with friends that go into those type of environments, like I know Pace, you're a singer and performer, you may have your clique or your entourage where you go to those different settings where you're in those situations. But if you are right with yourself, you're just not going to fall for everything. If you're not on drugs, you're not on uh, alcohol that's going to mess up your mind, you can make sound judgments. You, you Remember the God said, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You can find peace by, you know, the Holy Spirit being with you and the Spirit will discern, you know what? So I don't feel right. This By being with this certain crowd or this certain type of people, you know, other cultures can be, you know, problematic. Hey, I, don't, I ain't got time for it. I'd rather just be by myself and serve the Lord and just be out of that. I think a lot of times they seek us out and they find our weakness. They know that we're struggling. So they figure if they be nice to us, show us something nice, they can capture us in there. And then we kind of like that. As opposed to, yes, there's, there, there's bad among all of us. And yes, we should try to stick with our own. But the key is, is everybody want things fast and easy. I think I always say, they, like they always say, they say, take whatever issues and problems you have. They say, take it to the Lord. And if there's somebody that you like, just pray about it. God will show you if that's the person for you or to keep moving. But sometimes we don't do that. We want to just go, deal with our flesh and we deal with what is handed us. Well, let me ask you a question. We're going to close it off on this note. First of all, I want to thank you gentlemen for being on this Gerard show. Um, these are some very <clears throat> prolific individuals um, on Essence Television. We're talking about Taja Gina Jones, the preacher with, with a lot of wisdom. He lives by the Bible. He'll die by the Bible. And then we have Mr. Pace Brown, who is a hit singer. He's very wise upon his years, uh, private in individual doing big things. You definitely want to check out Cola. Oh, man, that's a, just a great song. Um, and you definitely want to um, check out him. Once the COVID is over, uh, Pace, are you going to be um, doing some concerts in a uh, city near you? Yeah, I mean, um, I got, I mean, we got plans. I mean, my management, we got plans of going back on tour as soon as these things happen. But, you know, recently we've been doing on these these live streams and whatnot for the time being because that's the new ways. So yeah, I can't wait. So All right, well, fun, I, but, you know, well, well, I got my food stamps ready. I'm gonna buy a ticket. <laughs> I guarantee you, man. That's all I can. I know I can't afford your tickets, but I'm gonna come with the food stamp. And then we also got Graham. Um, this gentleman is again the nephew of Eric Garner. He is a uh, a really wise gentleman and a producer. Now, are you still performing? Is that correct, Graham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do music. I, I still do music. I'm actually um. Just put out a best of album, you know. So I'm, I'm working, man. Follow me on the gram, and everything's good. This is it always a humble gentleman. I appreciate him always. And then these New Yorkers just tell it like it is. And then Oak Summers, um, the man who just always has wisdom on the top of his mouth, on his lips. He's always got something going on, and his disposition never changes whether you like him or not. Oak, tell me, um. What do you have upcoming and what can your fans look forward to? I know you're on a lot of podcasts, but what do you have upcoming as well? Man, um, right now, uh, we just started uh, the Tribe Up series to, uh, to, help, to help Black guys get some type of emancipation. So that's tribeup.org. And I'm waiting for this pandemic to, to, to be over with so we can start this, uh, this Lion Coin League tour, you know what I'm saying, so people can come out here and, 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 and participate with that. You know, Oak and I, uh, we agreed to this. He didn't know that he agrees to this, but Oak and I are going to help bring back the Jerry Curl. Graham, Pace, and J Taj, I hope you're on board with it so we can <laughs> I don't bring know back knows it. Him, man. <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. I mean, the Graham, Oak, you with me? I rock, I rock, I wear my hair Shirley Temple Curls, man. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I wear my hair, I wear my hair curls already, I man. I'm, I'm going to come back to the curl with the 360s, though. It's going to be a 360 Jerry Curl. I, I got you. The yeah, finger waves? Exactly. And then, um, <laughs> I wear finger waves, too. I wear the conk, all that, man. My hair burned out. And Pace, and Pace I want you to, for years. And Pace, I want you to help me bring back the Todd One suit. Okay, all right, that's enough, ladies and gentlemen. We're done. Stay tuned for the next episode of Sherrard Show. We're going to have Dorothy Moore as well as the Whispers. I'm Sherrard. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good evening. We'll talk to you then. Bye-bye now.